That's not a song we sing very often, but it's a song that Eileen Stugart requested for her memorial service. So I thought I would have a, I was kind of be reminded of the song this morning for those who will be there. Well, I'll tell you a strange kind of story from my youth. When I was way back, when I was 16 years old, I was trying to get a job at the small corner market uh, a block away from my house in Los Angeles. Um, at that time, the store was being sold by its owner, a man named Leon Skernik, uh, a Polish Jew who dis- survived World War II in Warsaw and escaped to the West by climbing over the Berlin Wall, to Su Boi Choi, a Korean who had recently immigrated to America. By the way, this was a block and a half away from the neighborhood store that my Russian-Ukrainian Jewish grandfather owned when I was growing up. Interesting neighborhood. I heard, overheard a conversation between the two men that was awkward for me to be listening in on. Sue was saying he didn't want to hire me because I came from a bad home, because it was one without a father. Leon was trying to explain to him that I did have a father, but that he had died. But he kept using the phrase, passed away, for died, a phrase that Sue didn't understand. Um, They finally understood each other, and I got the job. But among other things, uh, it was a lesson for me in how carefully we try not to talk about death. Carl Truman wrote, we are born to die, death is inevitable, which is why each of us finds it so terrifying. Modern Western culture has tried valiantly to domesticate and marginalize death, both by taming it through fictionalized representations in movies and TV shows, and by keeping the real thing out of sight. John Bunyan doesn't have that problem, and we'll see that in this week's reading of Pilgrim's Progress. Um, I'm, I, think I, I, think I, I think I got that out of lie, but it is funny. I hate Woody Allen, but he's funny. <laughs> the, uh, let's see, where am I? Yeah, there we are. We should be there. I'm going to split our last section of readings actually into two weeks. I, I know some of your small groups are actually a week or two behind, so I think this will help. Today we'll look at the first two sections of what was going to be this week's readings. And next Sunday we'll finish up with Christian's final arrival at the celestial city. You'll find immediately as you start this week's reading that the Christian and hopeful arrive in a place called Beulah, or the country of Beulah. Now, in Hebrew, Beulah means married, or marriage. And Bunyan may have taken a picture of the promised restoration of Jerusalem at a time when the Jews were in their Babylonian captivity and Jerusalem was, was in ruins, Maybe twisted it out of context just a little bit. Um, Isaiah writes this. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be silent until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness, all the kings your glory. And you will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord shall give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of God a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken. Your land shall no more be termed desolate. You shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. That's in Hebrew, Beulah. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. As for young men, as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you, and your bridegroom rejoices over the bride and your God rejoices over you. So he brings that complicated picture of joy and restoration and salvation and beauty into this last stop on his pilgrimage. Now this is the last stop before the river of death and the celestial city. And it seems to function in the story as an image of the earthly goodness of mature Christians as they live together in the body of Christ, who is also the bride of Christ. One commentator called it the outer suburb of heaven. Uh, and, and frankly, the picture Bunyan paints is comforting and compelling. Let me, let me read it from the book for you. It says, Now I saw in my dream the Christian and hopeful were beyond the enchanted grounds, and they had entered the country of Beulah. Since the way went directly through it, they stopped to refresh themselves for a while. The air there was very sweet and pleasant. They listened to the singing of birds, watched beautiful new flowers appear every day. 
and listen to the songs of the turtle dove. The sun was shining day and night, and they were beyond the valley of the shadow of death, as well as the reach of giant despair. In fact, you could not even as much as see Doubting Castle from there. However, they were inside of the celestial city and met some of those that lived there. This was the land. The angels frequently walked in it because it was on the very borders of heaven. Also in this land, the contract between the bride and the bridegroom was renewed. Yes, here as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so does their God rejoice over them. In this land, they had no lack of grain and wine, for they reaped more than they could ever possibly imagine, receiving throughout their entire pilgrimage. Here they heard loud voices from outside the city saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your salvation comes. Behold, your reward is in him. All the inhabitants of the country called the holy people, the redeemed people of the Lord, sought out. They walked in the land rejoicing more than they had during any other part of their journey. Isn't that beautiful? I love this. I really love this short section. You know, Pilgrim's Progress presents our, our earthly journey as a dangerous and deadly struggle against forces that would destroy our souls and our relationship with Jesus Christ. But there are also times when life is good. Our relationship with God is strong. His grace firmly holds us. We rejoice with other Christians in the church as we are refreshed and protected and drawn willingly towards our final home with God. Uh, George Cleet Cheever puts it this way. The Lambula, lovely as it is, is only one stage in our pilgrimage. And that a very advanced stage. It is observable how John Bunyan makes his pilgrims go from strength to strength by a gradual progression of one degree of grace, discipline, and glory to another. The coloring is that of heaven of the soul, and Bunyan has poured his own heaven entrance soul into it. With all its depths and power, there is nothing exaggerated. It is made up of the simplest and most scriptural materials and images. We seem to stand in a flood of light poured on us, from the open gates of paradise. So yes, there are good times along the difficult way. And yet all this prepares the pilgrims for their last challenge, and that is the river of death. A clear view of the city of God on the other bank draws them on, but the final barrier is both challenging and complex. Twice in this section, right as they're going from Beulah towards the river, the angels ask, uh, some, uh, I'm sorry, the pilgrims ask angels there uh, two questions. Twice they are given somewhat cryptic answers. Let, let me read them to you. As they move forward, the two men dressed in clothes shining like gold and those faces glowed radiantly. These angels asked the pilgrims where they came from. Right, there's that question. And they told them. They also asked them where they had visited and what difficulties, dangers, comforts, and pleasures they had encountered. Then the angel said, you have two more difficulties to overcome before you can gain entrance to the city. Christian and Hopeful asked, will you guide us the rest of the way? The angels were willing to assist them, but said, you must complete the journey by your own faith. They traveled together until they came to the side of the gate of the city. Between them and the gate, there was a very deep river with no bridge to cross over to the other side. The pilgrims were stunned by the sight of this daunting and formidable river. But the angel said, you must go through this river or else you cannot arrive at the gate of the city. Then the pilgrims began to lose heart, especially Christian. They looked around and find no easier route that would allow them to avoid the river. So they asked, is the water all the same depth? It's a great answer here. Uh, the angels replied, no. They offered no further guidance on the matter except to say, you'll find it deeper or shallower according to your own trust in the king of this place. Now, you know, death has often been imagined as a river. In Greek mythology, the river Styx formed the boundary between earth and the underworld of Hades. And often a pharaoh was imagined as carrying dead souls across the river. Bunyan borrows perhaps this image for his own story. And let me tell you, friends, today we don't like to talk much about death. Um, we find ways to talk around it. COVID has forced us to think about it more concretely. But, you know, we still don't like to say the word, do we? Because, you know, it, it is the final enemy. And, and the one that we all know, we, we have no hope to defeat. 
Now, let me tell you, in Bunyan's time, death was pretty common. Uh, remember that Bunyan had a wife and two children die. A contemporary Puritan writer and Oxford scholar, John Owen, had 11 children, 10 of them who died in infancy, one who's died, who survived but died as a young adult. Death was an almost daily part of their lives. So yeah, they needed to talk about it. Uh, they couldn't hide it the way we can. And let me tell you, friends, as we go into this part of the story, I love how Bunyan, himself a pastor, um, approaches death here. Now, well, let's be honest. It would have been easy to have Christian and, and hopeful stride boldly to the river without fear, traverse it with ease. Um, you know, remember, Christian is, is, is kind of an autobiographical uh, take on, on Bunyan himself. That's not what happens. Um, it's wonderful here that I think Bunyan wants to show um, how weakness uh, can still be overcome by God's strength um, rather than showing how strong he might be. Uh, we read here, seeing no other option, the pilgrims decided to press forward and entered the water. Immediately, Christian began to sink and cried out to his good friend, Helpful, I'm sinking in deep waters. The billows are rolling over my head. All the waves are crashing down on me. It starts to look like quite the failure. Now, some of you may know that a, a few years after he published Pilgrim's Progress, Bunyan wrote a sequel in which his wife, who is renamed Christiana, along with their children, take to the King's Road. A number of people encouraged him to do that. And, and I, th I think a lot of people like me felt bad that Christian ditched them to go on a journey. Although remember, he tried very hard to take them with him. When Christiana comes uh, to the, to ready to cross the river of death, the story is very different. When she gets there, the road is filled with people accompanying her to the riverbank. Beyond the river, horses and chariots are waiting to bear her to the gates of the celestial city. She waves goodbye to her loved ones. She enters the river, quickly passing out of their sight. And when she enters the gate, she's received with joyful ceremonies. It was easy. And, and she had companions on this journey that were incredibly bold. One of her companions is a guy who, who Bunyan names Valiant for Truth, an incredibly bold and confident Christian. Can you remember back a few weeks ago, we talked about a guy named Little Faith who was robbed by bandits and left badly shaken? Well, Valiant for Truth meets the same bandits in the same place on the, the journey. But things go differently for him. Let me read you what happens. Soon the pilgrims came to the place where little faith was robbed. There stood a man with his sword drawn and his face all bloody, who said to them, I am a pilgrim. My name is Valiant for Truth. I was ambushed here by three men who came out of the bushes with their long knives. One of them said, Halt, we have a question to ask you. I said, Well, what is it? And he said, Will you go with us or turn back, turn and go back where you came from? or die on this spot? Well, I answered, I have been a follower of Jesus Christ for many years, and I cannot turn back now. Where I came from is not where the Lord wants me to be. And you should know that one who has been a follower of Christ for many years would never join a band of thieves. As for dying on the spot, that remains to be seen. If you undertake to make me choose one of your courses, you do so at your parable. I have considerable strength. I love my life in the pilgrim way, and I will not give them up easily. The Lord put me on this way, and I intend to stay on it. Then these three came upon me with their knives. I drew my sword and fought them. We fought for more than three hours, and they have left some of their marks of valor on me, and as you see, but they also carried away some of mine. And when they saw they could not take my life immediately, they broke and ran. That's one tough Christian, right? What happens when he goes to cross the river, he comes up to the river and he says, when this day came, many accompanied him to the riverside. When he went down to the water, he sang, oh, death, where is thy sting? And out of the deep water, he cried, oh, grave, where is your victory? And as he was nearing the other side, they heard him say, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So he passed over and all the trumpets sounded for him on the other side. And in that story, other companions of Christianity, Mr. Steadfast, even Mr. Weak, passed through the river confidently. 
But what happens when Christian tries to go through the river? He can find no footing and he starts to drown. Immediately Christian began to sink and cried out to his good friend, I'm sinking in dink water. The billows are rolling over my head and all the waves are crashing down on me. Hopeful replied, be courageous, my brother, for I feel the bottom and it's firm. But Christian continued to panic and sputtered. The sorrows of death have totally surrounded me. I will not see the land that flows with milk and honey. And with that, a great darkness and a sense of horror fell over Christian so that he could not see anything ahead of him. To a large degree, he lost his senses and could not remember or talk clearly about any of the blessings or encouragement he had experienced while traveling on his pilgrimage. Rather, everything he said revealed terrifying thoughts and fears that he would die in the river and never gain entrance to the celestial city. Christian loses his sense of salvation and worth in Christ as he approaches death, and he flounders. However, Hopeful's feet reach the bottom, and he grabs Christian, and he encourages him with God's promises, and he basically drags him across the river. And then he tells him of God's message for him in his fear and panic. And it's from Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. The flame will not consume you. And finally, as he comes to his senses and hears God's word again, Christian overcomes his fear. And when he does, his feet find solid ground. And together, they wade to the other side. Now, friends, let me tell you what a grace it is that Bunyan models the imperfect Christian at the end. He's not Mr. Steadfast, not valiant for truth, not hopeful, not even confident Christiana. All the fears and lies of death nearly overtake him. And in this moment, his frailty is on full display. And let me tell you, friends, this could be me or you or any one of us. Death is the final enemy. We all fear it to some degree. But the good news is that we need to remember that even death is defeated by God. Again from Isaiah, God will swallow up death forever. Am I, am I, eh, there, I should be there. Swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people will be taken away from the earth, for the Lord has spoken. Some of you think that came from Revelation, but he got copied into Revelation. And you know, Bunyan could have presented himself as a sort of super Christian. I mean, 12 years in prison for his faith, one of the most popular preachers in England at the time. You know, Christian could have stormed across the river, taken heaven by storm, you know. But, but actually, I'm, I'm more comforted by a man struggle at the end because it reminds me that if I struggle, I'm not lost. It's faith that carries me across the river. Remember the angel said that. What can you take with you? You have to do it by faith. And what is faith? Faith is a gift. Faith is a gift. And I'm reminded that our faith is supported by and strengthened by our brothers and sisters in Christ. God gives him someone to help him remember God's promises and not give up when fear overtakes him. And friends, let me tell you that if you think you can do our journey, this journey, on your own, you're only fooling yourself. I'll tell you what I told the kids. Find good friends to take with you on a journey. You're going to need them. Perhaps when you expect at least. And finally this this morning. Don't worry that as you cross the, the, the strong current and deep waters of death that, that you have the strength to make it through. Because you know what? You don't. You will not make it because you have a firm grip on God. But because God in Jesus Christ, has a firm grip on you. Because again, our faith is that gift that he holds us fast with. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. And friends, that's God's promise. So count on it. Let's pray. Father, thank you that in all the difficult times in life, it is not the our grip on you is strong, but that your grip on us is unbreakable. 
And even if we come to that final point in our life and, and we fall apart, we seem to lose our sight, lose our faith, can't find any footing for our feet. Help us to remember the promises that you have for us and how it is you who will take us across that last river to the home, to the place that we were created to be. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand and join us? Friends, go from this place back out into the journey that God has called us to. And know that even when that journey comes to what seems to the end, that's really just the beginning. And may his grace, his mercy, his peace, and his promise be with you now and forevermore through our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen.